Saddles need to be comfortable. If you're struggling to find the right one, does this mean you need a 3D printed saddle? How do 3D printed saddles differ? And should you buy this one? You probably clicked on this video because you're interested in a 3D printed saddle. A few years ago, I invested in this, the specialized 3D printed mirror saddle in the PAL version. At the time, it cost me a hefty 390 pounds. I have, however, done nearly 20,000 kilometers in the saddle now, so I think I have a decent enough amount of miles to give it a good review. Please note that saddles are highly individual to the person, so what is right for me might not be right for you. There is some boring anatomy stuff here, but I need to get this out of the way because it will help me explain if the saddle is going to be right for you. If we come to the whole pelvis piece here, you, the most important thing to know is that you've got three bones. So you've got the ilium, the ischium here, and then finally the pubis on the front. And this kind of makes all the bones look like they're one piece. And you kind of sit on these two bones here on the saddle. But however, for me, where these two bones are fused at this point here, I've got like a little notch, just some extra some bone growth around this area. And it's more prominent on my left side than it is on my right side. This is very over exaggerated, of course. So I've put some blue tack on. This is kind of what digs into the saddle a little bit more. And this is where I find the benefits of a 3D printed saddle. The 3D printed structure seems to absorb this knobble a lot better for me and decrease pressure on that one specific spot, spreading it over the bone further. This, however, is not to say that it won't work for you if you don't have this problem because it does seem to cradle most of the pelvis very, very well. So even without that knobble, I think this will work for you. Let's talk about the design of the saddle. The first thing I want to talk about is the changes in density. It is softer at the front and harder at the back and they achieve this by using a 3D printed lattice with a varying structure design inside the saddle itself. You can't do this with a normal foam design saddle and the foam will just always be a singular density all the way through the saddle itself. Whereas this saddle gently changes in density in certain areas. There is also a nice cat out for your soft bits in the middle and for whatever reason, people always want to touch and poke this part in the middle here. At the back, it's probably a little bit too wide for me, but this is a compromise that I'm willing to have for this saddle. I would also love to try the Roman Evo saddle from Specialized, but I'm not forking out that kind of money again just to try that saddle. Hit, hit Specialized, I have a thousand subscribers now. Who does this guy think he is? Let's talk about the comfort. Comfort levels are high. I really can sit in this saddle for a lot longer than most other saddles that I've tried. There are also much longer periods and durations between having to stand out of the saddle because of discomfort. It works for me personally as a 3D print kind of absorbs the knobbly bit where that bone fuses that we spoke about earlier. And the power saddles from Specialized also help you hold a more aggressive position, a more forward tilted position. And this one does just the same because it's the same design as the power saddle. It just allows more tilt from the pelvis itself to help you stay in a more aerodynamic position. Because of the zone density changes as it's softer at the front, it lets you stay in that tilted position for a lot longer as well I found compared to a normal saddle where you'll get much more pressure build up around the front or the perineal area. It's not perfect though. I'm not sure if this is with literally every saddle, but after five hours, you do still know that you've been sitting in it on it for a long time. With that being said, I can feel a noticeable decrease in after effects after a long day in the saddle. I do believe this is because of the 3D printed design, and I think that this 3D printed lattice structure will be more applicable to a wider range of cyclist pelvises. I would now like to talk about how the saddle works with different bib shorts and different types of chamois pads because it is something that I have noticed with this saddle. The saddle does fit pretty much all of my bib shorts really well and it's, I would say it's complemented them nicely in terms of increasing my comfort levels on the bike. There are certain bib shorts that I used to wear for only shorter rides but now I can find that I'm using these bib shorts on much longer rides, like six, seven hour rides with this saddle. Interestingly, this worked better for the thinner chamois, but with certain shorts with a thicker padded chamois, 
I can no longer wear them with this saddle. My Lacole bib shorts are an example of this as they have a lot more padding in the chamois itself. This meant there was actually too much padding with the saddle and the chamois on top of it and it increased the chafing levels. This is with only these bib tights though and my other bib tights have all performed much, much better with this saddle. It almost has a golf ball style 3D printed fabric over the top. I must say it's very grippy and stops you from sliding or moving in the saddle very, very well. It has also worn really well. It's getting shiny in some areas, but really it's still very grippy. It hasn't lost any of its function, I'd say. It, the saddle really does let you be locked into the position that you want to be in on the saddle. That's one big advantage to this 3D printed. Let's talk about cleaning because I know there will be many, many questions here. Cleaning is actually way easier than you think. I just spray it with a hose and it washes out pretty easily. Then you can just leave it to dry or if you're lucky enough or have an air compressor, you can just blow it out and it dries really quick. One dilemma we've got with this short nose saddle, saddle is actually the shortness at the front here. So if I hook this onto the bike racks, just like you see all around, it only literally sits on the end and swings around super easy. If any wind blows this, it literally blows the bike straight off. But there is a way around this, only with Shimano though. You can just hook it on the front here and that solves all of my problems. Although downside to this as well, if there's a lot of bikes, you're going to piss a few people off by taking up all the space. Now we can go on to the durability of the saddle, how well it's lasted over these kilometers. As I said earlier, I've done nearly 20,000 kilometers on this saddle and it seems to be still going strong for me. At the moment, as far as I can tell, I think that it's going to last the duration of the bike that I'm going to have the bike for. Not one of the bits of the 3D printed lattice is broken yet at all and it's had a lot of people poking it. It is weirdly satisfying to squeeze the saddle and definitely the centre part and that's why everyone wants to touch it. It does weigh more than a high-end carbon saddle and that's just due to it having more 3D printed material on it, basically. It weighs 190 grams, so it's not ultra lightweight, but let's be quite frank, it's not heavy either. It does now come with a titanium rail, so you can get it for about 100 pounds cheaper. And that version weighs about 240 grams, so 50 grams heavier, but it is a cheaper option. The original power saddle, the lightweight version, is 160 grams. So all in all, it's only 30 grams heavier. And that's not bad in my books, like 30 grams for a lot of extra material and a lot of extra comfort for me. Is it worth the cost? Realistically, it costs way too much for what it is. But they have the market cornered for now on this specific 3D printing technology. But however, there are other companies and brands coming along now with other 3D printed tech which are producing similar saddles. We now have Physique which are using the same company as Specialized and Sella Italia are also joining the game trying to produce some 3D printed saddles too. If you have been struggling to find the right saddle or you have some very specific precious points such as myself, I think that these saddles are definitely worth a go. So all in all, has it been worth the money and has it been worth it for me? Yes, yes it has. For the money, it's been very durable and it's always kept me far more comfortable on longer rides with far less after effects the day after, if you know what I mean. The price is yet to drop still for these types of saddles and they will, eventually. But I do believe this is a big leap in bike comfort and technology, but it's not yet perfect. Well, everyone, this has been my review of the Specialized Mirror Power Saddle. If you have any further questions or have any comments, feel free to put them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. This has been Cycling Unboxed. I'll see you in a future video.